Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the CDL Podcast channel. In this episode today, it's going to be, hopefully, we say this sometimes, but it's going to be a little bit of a shorter one. Going to be doing mostly predictions, talk about a little bit of news. There have been uh, some roster updates, so we definitely have to talk about those. But then we're going to jump into predictions for the first week of qualifying matches for Stage 2. Um, the viewership and support on the last podcast was absolutely insane. It was uh, one of the few podcasts to hit a thousand views on YouTube, and you guys were showing a lot of love in the comments, filling up uh, the comment feed with a lot of returning commenter, uh, commenters, but also a lot of newer ones. So that was pretty awesome to see. We really enjoyed chatting with all of you, um, and we really appreciate the support. Uh, but before we get into this one, Kyle, how are you doing today? You know, it feels like we were just here. Uh, hey, we were. Our, discussing our major one wrap up. Um, but, you know, I'm uh, I'm ready to get into, I mean, I kind of wish we had a week off in between the end of the major. I was just kind of yeah. commiserating about that with you, but it's like, oh my gosh, we got to, you know, A, we got to unpack this entire land major, and then we got to get into a full week of, um, of these online qualifiers for major two. But uh, I guess we're moving right along, so uh, might as well not waste any more time. Yeah. For sure. I mean, it feels like it should be the opposite. It feels like the qualifying matches should end, and then that same weekend, you know, the next weekend we should kick off the major, and then you should have a week off after the major. But I guess it's not the way they decided to do it. So we're right back into it a couple days after the major wraps up and we recorded that. We're jumping into predictions for Stage 2 already. Um, but if you guys enjoy this one, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube, and follow and drop some reviews on the audio platforms. It will be greatly appreciated. Um, we got some news to talk about first before we do these predictions uh, for stage two, which doesn't even sound real. I feel like we were just doing off season podcasts talking about roster changes and potential rosters. And now we're talking about stage two already. Uh, but we do have some roster news to get into. First one being Paris fellow is gone. It's really weird how Paris is doing their roster changes too. Cause I think he is also like completely cut with a team. Like if they wanted to sub him back in, they can't uh, same thing they did with decimate. I have some, I feel like, pretty unique thoughts on this one, so I kind of want to hear what you think first, Kyle. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure I like it too much. Huh. Um, I I, I kind of wish that Fellow got a more, like, a bit longer of a, a shake with the team. Um, just because, like, we, like, from past experiences, like, we know the player that he's capable of being. Um, you know, that being said, I do, I do get that... Um, you know, every team is under the crunch to perform, and uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't think Fellow was the substitute player on um, on Empire last year by mistake. You know, that was mm -hmm. clearly a uh, you know a calculated pickup by you know Envy Hashro at the time. You know, um, <laughs> so yeah, I don't. I mean, uh, I'm kind of mixed. Uh, but you know, this was something that was rumored even before the major, um, the major one land. So, uh, not too surprising that it happened, but uh, still kind of bummed for fellow nonetheless. Yeah, I I actually like completely agree with you. I thought maybe you're gonna have a different take because I feel like a lot of people are kind of on the fellow had a point seven drop him, like the robots that just look at the KD. Um, but. I saw like RCD's voice in support for him a lot. A few other pros were voicing support for him uh, on Twitter. And I fully agree uh, with those people showing support for him. I feel like he didn't get a fair shake, to be honest with you. Uh, like you said, he wasn't on the Dallas Empire as a sub by mistake. He didn't get subbed in last year by mistake. He is one of those players that is like quite literally the perfect substitute. Kind of like when Pristini was signed on to FaZe. Obviously, FaZe is never going to sub somebody in, but he can like play every role if needed in a pinch. That's basically what Fellow can do. He's not ideally a main AR, but he could play it in a pinch. He could be your entry sub in a pinch, flex. Like he can do it all, which makes him like the perfect player to be a glue guy on a team. And I feel like he was thrown into a terrible situation on Paris. He's not a main AR. He's never been a main AR. I mean, a lot of his career, he was an entry sub. And then he started playing a little flex and challengers kind of out of necessity. He won Challengers Champs in Modern Warfare. Like, the dude's been doing it all. He was a sub on Dallas Empire. And then he's thrown into the main AR role in Paris. He didn't look comfortable at all in that role, uh, which I can't blame him. It's not his natural role. Uh, so it's probably going to be pretty hard to feel comfortable, especially when their team was kind of getting cooked on the map. Uh, it's going to put a lot of pressure on the main AR, and he's probably not going to feel comfortable at all. Kind of the same thing that's happening with Clay in uh, New York. But I just feel like he didn't get a fair shake. I, I would have liked to see. I know, like, whatever, he had a bad series in that series against Boston when they get eliminated uh, at Major 1. But I would have liked to see Fellow get a little bit more of a chance to use a sub, use a flex, and see what they could do with this team. Because, like, they showed some promise for the first time all year at the Major. And Fellow had, like, a map or two where he really popped off. 
uh, I don't know. You can agree or disagree with me on this. Uh, I kind of want to hear your thoughts on it, but I feel like there's just zero chance that Paris is ever going to be a team that you look at and say the respawn is their strong suit. I feel like their best chance to be a competitive team is to be a search and destroy heavy two, three, five team that tries to specialize in like one or two maps. They can try to get in hard point and maybe win those, but Fellow's a very good search and destroy player, a great communicator, an S and D star in some senses. So I guess it seems a little odd that you'd get rid of your best communicator, one of your best search and destroy players for a team that is probably gonna have to pride themselves on search, no? Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um about you know what the what the uh, philosophy of Paris should be. Um so yeah, I'm I don't know, like you were saying, uh maybe it doesn't make the most sense in the world at least at this juncture maybe give it one more uh one more full cycle of like online qualifiers and LAN, or even go like the new york route where you give it like one or two weeks and then if it's still not working then just you know bite the bullet and make the swap um because at this point you really don't have much to lose as far as like you you can really only go up i mean because they're already pretty i think they are the worst team in terms of cdl points right now um so yeah that's yeah kind of my my final my final thought there i don't know it just seems like they're like trying to, i guess it makes sense you're trying to get better and respawns or anything but it feels like no matter what like it's uh, jimbo may be a fantastic player but it doesn't feel like it's gonna make them anything better than a middle of the pack respawn team uh maybe i'll be wrong in that maybe jimbo coming will be an absolute superstar and it will but i feel like fellow could have done a very good job in his role and they could have been that search and destroy team that two three five team but I guess we'll see. Uh, I am excited. I guess we don't even technically know that Jimbo's in because at the time we hit record on this, it hasn't been like officially announced. Uh, we're kind of assuming because you know it was rumored that he was going to sign, and they were kind of waiting for him to come in for fellow. So it's actually not technically official he's the sub, but that's what we're assuming. Uh, I will say like it was probably it had to be fellow or John that moved on because they're going to keep gravity obviously since they subbed him in. And Temp's been their best player, so it was between fellow and John, and I guess. I would have rather seen fellow gone, but like I said, I, I still didn't want to see him gone. So uh, I guess we'll just have to see with Paris. Maybe a little honeymoon period kicks in from them and maybe we'll see him see him flourish. I hope I hope they get more competitive because it's them in New York at the bottom and we want to see those bottom teams at least make some interesting matches happen. Uh, another roster move. This one, obviously not uh, because of any poor performances or anything, but some more personal issues. Uh, Gizmo was subbed out for Paul X. Sounds like they signed uh, London signed Paul X to a two week contract. So he returns. Uh, and Gizmo basically said, uh, I need to catch a break. Family member got diagnosed with cancer. Little brother collapsed and had a fit. I'm throwing up blood, have been for the last two weeks. And my head just isn't in the game at the moment. Uh, so hopefully, come stage two, my luck changes. So obviously, shout out to Gizmo. Hope everything. Uh, gets better he is traveling home they said i believe home for him is somewhere in the uk don't quote me on that that could be completely wrong uh but i believe they said he's heading home to be with family so hopefully that all gets sorted out soon and um everything is okay for him and his family uh obviously you don't want to see anybody get subbed out uh for personal reasons like that because that is awful so hopefully everything's good with gizmo hopefully we get to see him back soon and everything's good with his family but paul x subbed in he was on ravens last year for a little bit yeah, I mean, this is a uh, you know, I guess the the best logical substitute they could make. I mean, he's familiar with the team organization, mm -hmm. um, natural role fit too. Yeah, yeah, kind of coming in for that like flexish AR, um, yeah. AR like favored player. So, um, you know, uh, I don't think they should run into too much too many issues. Uh, this week they play subliners and uh thieves so i mean kind of a kind of like a one two split there um should be able to at least get one you know yeah yeah you would think so um but yeah i mean like you said i we don't need to labor on what gizmo's going through too much i mean it sounds like it's all i mean it's it should be all like personal stuff that he deals with on his own mm -hmm. um we don't need to be you know all up in his business but obviously wish the best for for him and his family and everything that's going on um yeah throwing throwing up blood doesn't sound too good so i hope he gets no. that looked at um but i mean th for things that he can control um but yeah uh i don't know you you but like you would even even with gizmo uh in the squad you would probably give him you know the better chances of like 50 50 to go or you'd probably give them like you know um 
I don't think it changes their favorability in either match, you know? Um, yeah. Too, too much with Paul, um, because obviously subliners are like in the wilderness and uh yeah. and thieves are looking, you know, pretty good online, uh nonetheless. So Yeah, they're still uh, obviously definitely a favorite in that subliner series and i would still say they're they're not like out of it and oh I yeah no would i would say i would say that would be a favorite but i would say with thieves it'd be more of a toss-up than than anything yeah. you know i also so. think it's a little bit weird because i they have harry as a sub on their bench don't they is he i'm not sure too much about him i guess i don't really know exactly what role he plays but is there like maybe an issue is he sub. still in is he still in europe maybe playing an eu challenger so they can't get him here fast enough uh i'm not really sure but Sounds like they have Harry as a sub and didn't sub him in. So that just seems a little bit odd. Uh, yeah. Unless there's like a situation where they can't sub him in or they don't think the roles make sense. So I guess, I mean, well, I guess worst case, if <laughs> they didn't have a sub, they could have slid him to sub it or put somebody else at AR and let Zero play the flex if they needed to. But that just seems a little odd. There must be something going on there where he's just not able to play. Yeah, um, maybe our maybe our EU plugged in listeners will educate us on. Yeah. You know, if, if they're aware of what the situation is or whatever, but. Um, yeah, but yeah, I don't know. It sounds like also there was a chance I thought somebody was saying on Twitter, uh, like in the post about the info or like Gizmo said that there's a chance he's back for matches next week. So we'll have to see. It doesn't sound like anything that will be too long term from what they're saying. They said Pollock is on a two week contract like there's they don't really think there's any risk of him missing the major, which uh, hopefully is the case because obviously we want to see this London team at full strength whenever Gizmo is able to play. But maybe uh, I'm sure that was weighing on him mentally and physically. So that maybe could be a reason for uh, his little bit of a down performance. But I have absolutely no doubts that whenever Gizmo is back, he's going to come back frying because he was like the number two KD in the qualifying matches for major one for a reason. Uh, so excited to see how Paul X plays because he's definitely a, a quality player that deserves his chance in the league like so many other players uh, that don't have their chance because of how small. Uh, the league is and how few players actually get their chance but excited to see him play you ready to move on to our other little role swap yeah your team minnesota rocker are officially moving uh attached to the flex and priesta to the smg this isn't like too shocking of a move i guess because uh like aches has been like the leading proponent for on social media calling for this role switch like enable all these guys pretty much everybody on any podcast or social media has been calling uh for this change to be made so not something that's too terribly shocking, but uh, it is rather interesting. Uh, I'm intrigued. Yeah, I just don't get why um, Brian Saint like came out on Twitter. Uh, I think it was during the major. Um, yeah. And was like, you know, we've done this multiple times. It won't work. He kind of went on like a thread of, um, you know, we've tried it and et, et cetera, like um, kind of it seemed like they were quashing the rumors or putting it to bed. And then for this to get announced um, that they've you know decided to at least give this a go for, you would imagine for at least this week's matches and maybe extend it on if, if it starts to pay dividends. But um, yeah, I mean, I tend to, you know, if a lot of people are saying that this is the logical move, like a lot of outside observers, like, like you were mentioning, like, the podcast hosts and stuff they're all saying it so i'm inclined to believe uh you know them obviously they're ex-pro players and stuff so they they tend to know more than i do when it comes to like how people are gelling on the map so that's i don't know i mean you would you would hope that it turns out and works for them because right now like i, I think hardpoint is one of their big big struggles and uh they just need to you know, figure out how to play it better and maybe yeah. this role swap will help them. Well, and this is only like the good thing for them is in this situation. This is why I like the move. I don't know. I'm not saying it's going to be successful or anything, but the reason I like them trying it is because it obviously doesn't change their search and destroy. What they do in search is still going to stay the same, uh, which is obviously their strength and a thing that I don't think anybody has ever questioned. We think that they could be the best search and destroy team in the game still. I don't think anybody's questioning that. But this changes up their respawn a little bit, which is what they need help with. So I like the fact that they're trying this before trying a roster change and not just like jumping to that. Because it seems like, especially after like last year when so many people were making roster changes all the time, like the conclusion seemed like after one bad week of matches was roster change, roster change, roster change. And 
this team obviously stuck it out from last year. So I'm very glad after one stage, they're not just like, yep, we got to chalk it up, change change the roster, make a move. I like that they're at least trying this. And who knows? It might absolutely bomb. It might not work. They might not get any better. And then they can make a roster change and I'd be okay with it. But I'm very glad that they're at least trying this out because that means that their chemistry will stay the same. We know that they'll still be a dominant search and destroy team. And then let's say this improves their respawn just a little bit. I think you and any listener out there would agree that if Minnesota can even like find a way to start splitting their hard points and splitting their controls, if they become like a 50, 50 team in both respawn game modes, uh, they're going to become a pretty dangerous team because I would say there's a pretty good chance that they're going to have a positive win rate in search and destroy. At least going forward, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. You, you would imagine that this will only really serve to boost their respawn. Like you said, and, I mean, part and of if it also, doesn't, I like that they're at least trying it before swapping out a player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's I no mean, obvious player to swap out in this team like we've talked about plenty of times. Right. I, I think that they're going to be very cautious even mm-hmm. uh, down the line if this like doesn't work or it only works marginally to to move away from their current four. Um, just because I think they have four really good players. It's just there's uh, there's obviously like... Um, they're kind of behind on learning the game. I yeah, don't, the pacing I don't, and roll. Yeah, is off. I don't doubt that they can, you know, be a top a top tier team again. Um, but they they've just been slow off the off the blocks compared to what a lot of people were guessing. I guess um, just mm-hmm. going into the year. Uh, so yeah, um, that that's about that with Rocker. I guess we'll see. Obviously, they I think they play uh, two matches this this weekend. So. Um, yeah, they they do play they play two matches, um, so we'll be able to see them in action a little bit. So, yeah, uh, I'm excited to see what happens. And looks like they're playing Toronto and Paris, so they would have the potential to uh, go two and all if that respawn improves. Not impossible. Yeah, uh, well, they have they have uh, they're going up against Ultra, who didn't win a single hard point at the yeah major battle of the the barrel bottom of the barrel for hard point there. Um, but we can move on to our mm-hmm. last, I guess this isn't really roster news, but our last news about a player uh, before we get into predictions, and that's Krim. He had his ear surgery that he was talking about. He had like no directional hearing in one of his ears. And uh, in typical Krim fashion, he couldn't just tweet about it and explain what happened. He had to kind of troll. He's like, yeah, I wasn't even put under. I could hear them sawing my eardrum uh, and it wasn't pleasant. So he was obviously in typical Krim fashion, just trolling people with it. Uh, I love the guy. He is he is so funny. Um, but Sounds like everything went well. He's like back to scrimming today. He was telling Jordan General he was about to like obliterate him or something. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what he was doing. Uh, I just clicked on his Twitter to like kind of look at the tweets. Yeah, he was like surgery done. Luckily, didn't have to go under. But let me tell you something. The sound of a scalpel sawing back and forth on your ear dr- eardrum sent shivers down my spine. About to smoke Jordan General's attack dogs and lay down the beat down via baguettes today on Paris Legion. Uh so, I mean, Krim wasted no time to start trolling uh, in his first tweet back from the Major. Seems like maybe he's in a little better spirits uh, than he was at the end of the Major. Hopefully that's the case. Uh, and hopefully we see New York getting back to be competitive. But Krim's ear surgery is done. Looks like he's not missing any time, which is great. Uh, I want to see Krim 6 in the league at all times because he is free entertainment. Yeah, We also need um, to see more Krim wins because we need more Krim interviews. Yeah, exactly. And we don't need to... I mean, we need to kind of quash this whole, like... You know, are are Crane Krim gonna like retire in unison or something? Yeah, we don't need that. Yeah, I mean that would just be terrible for uh, you know people who are really plugged into the league and uh, yeah. So hopefully, you know they're able to at least get back to you know somewhat uh, of a competitive team because right now they're you know they're still kind of like I said in the wilderness. Um, But yeah, glad Krim's procedure went well. I have no idea what could have been going on but obviously uh you know thank god for uh you know his uh his audiologist or whoever performed this uh procedure on him so yeah uh because having no directional hearing even outside of uh you know a video game career is kind of would be kind of wild you know you can't tell where like, sounds are coming from or yeah and he was like it's a constant dull pain and i've been pulling 24 hour stream because i can't fall asleep i was like that sounds miserable <laughs> like can't sleep constant pain in your ear like i imagine he's probably getting headaches from it i can't that sounds horrible so hopefully it's all good for him uh maybe they'd like 
rewired his brain and now he's going to be Crimbot again and fry. Who knows? Um, <laughs> but we can talk about major, uh, major one viewership. Some great viewership numbers. Uh, I believe they said like for Sunday, the average uh, concurrent viewers was like 130 or something. It peaked uh, even higher than that. Uh, they said it was the record breaking viewership for an event since the CDL's inception. Obviously, some events before the CDL, uh, like Black Ops 4, uh, Black Ops 3, AW, I know for a fact, and IW Champs with the Optic in it, those uh, definitely all were over 200K and stuff. But this was the highest viewership. It was upper 100K. Uh, highest viewership since the CDL's inception. So that's awesome to see, especially for a major one for a game that has been pretty hated by the public. It's like one of the worst selling Call of Duty titles in a long time. Uh, obviously, has a lot of negative publicity on Twitter. Uh, people are down on Warzone. People are down on the multiplayer. Uh, and here we are, and we're still pulling higher viewers. So hopefully, this is a wake up call to Activision to show them that you know what the CDL is pulling some good viewers because that is pretty insane. Uh, like 160k ish uh, concurrence is nuts. So. I can only imagine if we see Optic in some more finals uh, later in the year, maybe another Optic phase final at Champs or something. The potential is insane, especially uh, I don't even think that counts like all the co-streams and stuff because like if we see Thieves making a deep run, I'm sure like Courage will co-stream it and stuff. So uh, pretty cool to see the viewership numbers being so high. Yeah, it kind of speaks again to uh, you know the, the marketing ability of Hex and Optic and everything. Uh, and also given that Optic was you know playing lights out you know they were playing incredible at this event as well so no wonder the sunday viewership was uh you know as high as it was um mm -hmm. but yeah uh the the highest viewership since uh the cdl's inception is pretty pretty wild too because um well i mean i, I guess you can kind of chalk up modern warfare since most of it was online um but yeah, yeah uh i don't know uh you would think that you know, I I don't know exactly what the major uh, major five and champs for Cold War was, but uh, I would probably say it was over a hundred k for um, sure. Yeah, but I mean, those were some good events too. Like major five and champs were both like pretty, you know, pretty hype events uh, as well. Because obviously we were getting fans back for the first time in over like over a year. Um, so you know, I I think. That the hype in the community was pretty high but you know when uh yeah and, and like you were saying the uh the game isn't really well <laughs> received as well so mm -hmm. uh, it, it also speaks to just people's dedication to the competitive uh, scene i guess um, i also think it speaks to how well our storylines in call of duty and how uh good our personalities are because like everybody says they hate this game nobody likes this game but because of our personalities and our brands and our players and how popular they are uh, people right. are watching for storylines like Half the reason people are watching are for the storylines of these players because it's like a character arc for a lot of these players that have been around for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're watching that. We were like watching the storyline of the new guard and subs uh, with Simp and Abizi versus the old guard and Scump. Uh, I don't know. The storylines are great. Hopefully we can keep creating those storylines, create some more rivalries. We need Krim and Clay to be on a good team so they can actually play the real villain role because Krim will embrace that villain role if he's playing Optic uh, better than Simp and Abizi will. Um, but we can move on to predictions if you're ready. Let's yeah. we dive right into them. Uh, you want to give the score update quick? I believe you're still yeah. ahead of me. Yeah, so we um, obviously we didn't keep track of uh, our major predictions. So this is just like the the running season total. Mm -hmm. um, so I am up 35 to 26. Uh, just a reminder of the scoring real briefly. Uh, getting the result right. So like, you know, if you get the team winning correct, that's one point. Uh, and if you get the map count right, it's an additional two points. And then if you <laughs> if the team you pick gets swept or reverse swept, it's minus one point. Uh, so there's prediction that you know there's ways to fluctuate in points. Um, and so yeah, I'm up by nine yeah. points uh, heading into major two. So you know it's still within you know e easily in a week you could make up that and more. So that's what yeah. kind of makes it fun. I think I picked Paris once or twice in that first stage. Probably wasn't smart. Uh, maybe I should stop going so risky, but I'm not going to change that. I'm going to keep taking risky picks. Might pick Paris once this week. Uh, maybe twice. Maybe I'll say screw it. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, you can easily make up ground. I mean, like the reason that you had such a, a big lead is because that one week I picked like a lot of the matches right, but you happened to get like three of those matches in correct map score, and that just like 
I mean, that means you got like nine points for those and I only got three. So you really separate mm-hmm. yourself. Cause I remember one week you were like spot on with uh, map counts, which yeah, that, honestly, that, that was our scoring week. system, the map counts are most important. Yeah, that was week two. Um, so we, you know, I, I had had four correct map counts as well. So uh, yeah, that's and, like the most you important had part. two. So that was six points right there. Yeah. So well, we yeah. can we can dive into it with the first that's match, which is an interesting one because. By the time this one happens, will New York have made a roster change? Like, as of now, there's been nothing announced, but like, it wouldn't be shocking. Like, if they've been scrimming with other people and have made a roster change, I guess I wouldn't be shocked to see it. But as of the time we're talking about this New York versus London Royal Ravens match, it is Paul X subbed in for London for Gizmo, and New York has the same roster? Question mark. We don't know if they're swapping somebody out. Uh, but I'm definitely still going London here. Uh, I'm going to give New York a map just because I have no idea what's happening with their roster. And Hydra has been LeBron on the map, like hard carrying their team. So I think Hydra might be able to win them a map with London maybe being a little less organized uh, because they have a new team. But I'm going London 3-1 here. Yeah, I'm going to have the same pick, but I'm going to say it's going to go to a game five uh, just for kind of shits and gigs, you know. Um, We'll just see if see if New York can, you know, maybe Krim comes back with some piss and vinegar in his (laughs) in his gameplay or something, and um, or you know, if if I'm maybe I'm hedging my bet a little bit on New York, you know, coming in with a new like with one with one new player or something, um, because this could easily go like three zero as well, uh, to to Ravens. Um, Yeah, I could see this going any map count, but but most likely Ravens. Yeah, so I'm going to go 3-2, and you're going 3-1. Okay. Next match we got is another one that I'm intrigued by, Seattle-Boston. Uh, obviously, Seattle is on the absolute downfall right now from where they were. Boston uh, had, a, I mean, a good placing at the major, a top six for them. A lot of people feel they overachieved. A lot of people also, the talk has kind of been that they were kind of a fluke top six uh, because... They beat uh, Florida in the weirdest series we've ever seen, maybe, in that super outslay series where they got outslayed by like 60 kills and won the match. Uh, and then they took out Paris, who obviously a lot of people don't think is a great team, and then they lose to Toronto. So a lot of people are call- kind of calling it like a fluke top six. Uh, I get where they're coming from, but at the same time, Boston is just playing who's in front of them, and you can't fault them for beating who's in front of them. Uh, so I, I, I guess I don't really know where I'm leaning on this one because it, it just a little while ago this would have been an easy pick for seattle but they're kind of on the free fall right now yeah i mean this really comes down to how much faith do you have in seattle to turn it around um you know obviously they only have like less than a week um to you know scrim and kind of figure out where their heads are at um and it really yeah like you were saying it does come down to it, it also kind of relies on how much confidence do you have in Boston? I can see, I I can definitely appreciate the arguments for like the fluke top six. Mm-hmm. Um, but then again, like you know, they're not picking and choosing who they're playing. Like they're they're yeah. just you know going out mm-hmm. and playing. And and I've liked what I've seen from uh, Nero and Capsule especially in Boston. No matter um, who they're playing, I guess they kind of got blown up by face, but they keep everything scrappy and close. Yeah, I mean, like, they just it, don't it, feel like they're ever going to get blown out in a series. Yeah, they took Ultra to Game Five, like Room Ten or something. So. Mm-hmm. Um, winning two hard points which is un unusual for them yeah i don't know um it's just so hard to believe that seattle's fallen so so fast um yeah. this would have been a no doubt 3031 seattle a couple weeks ago yeah i'm gonna maybe i'm crazy but i'm, I'm still gonna ride on seattle here but i'm gonna go three two seattle okay i'm going same map count but other team i'm going three two boston i think nero is gonna have yeah. an icy game five and have a double digit uh kill game five close it out i mean i wouldn't be shocked at all if that result comes true or really any really i could see this going any which way Um, hi i said it too nero is kind of in that bands boat i was a bands hater mm -hmm. for the longest time i refused to hate him i'm not on that level with nero yet but this guy really really impressed me uh i like what i saw from nero i wasn't actually convinced when he got signed that he should be in the cdl because he struggled kind of in challenges his uh, at least team success wise i didn't know a lot about him but this guy, I like him, and I think Capsule has potential. I like this Boston team. I still do believe that they have a very high ceiling because I think they could be uh, a top three search and destroy team. And I feel like we've seen flashes from Nero and Cap uh, in Respawn that like, if they're able to pick it up and be a little more consistent, I, I feel like this team could crack like consistent top six, top seven spot. I uh, don't know that they're there yet, but I just feel like they're way more consistent than Seattle. That's why I picked them in a map five. 
But Seattle has accuracy. The Iceman. It's Iceman versus Iceman. TJ versus accuracy. <laughs> <laughs> and we get to see him in a game five, hopefully. But you're going Seattle 3 2. I'm going Boston 3 2. Yep. All right. I feel like that is a pretty logical series to split on, though. It's definitely one of the more toss ups, I think, on the week. Right, right. All right. Next match Florida versus LAG. Another kind of weird one that I feel like could go either way. These a lot of these like first set of matches are some of the more lower end, like bottom half of the league teams battling it out. This is weird. Yeah, so Florida, the most like enigmatic team. Uh, <laughs> are they, they making like, a roster change? They might be making a swap. Who knows? I feel like if if we're recording this, we're we're recording this Wednesday night, so we're we're operating off of like the most recent news. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, matches start like this match is on Friday, so I, I feel like if they would have announced. They they would have done it already, yeah. That's um, true. but you know, I don't think that would have changed my prediction. I I still kind of have a lot of faith, as I said, in this Gorillas team, um, mm-hmm. especially to get it done over a, a five map series. Um, I'll go ahead and give Florida one map here. Uh, so a three one for Gorillas here. Um, Kay. I just think I I think Florida do have a map win in them, but you know they're still trying to figure out how to play the game like if you looked at some of their like mini map positioning like they were just like not in the hill you know like i i think that was pointed out on a lot of different you know review podcasts and stuff but like yeah. they were just like they were just not playing hard like how you would expect like even like even your pickup uh you know your pickup uh like ranked play team to play you know like you just, somebody's got to mm. be in the hill you know getting time yeah yeah i i think both of us like I think we're both in sync with LAG more than almost any team in the league. We both feel, I, I mean, I, apart from like the obvious ones, like phase is good. Wow. We're both in sync on that. But uh, I feel like LAG we're pretty in sync with them. Like very, uh, I guess very many people are down on them uh, because obviously, and rightfully so I could say you could be down on them. They had a very bad weekend at the major, but I feel like both of us still haven't lost the faith for whatever reason in LAG. We both just kind of think this team is going to hang around as long as they don't make a change prematurely. We feel like they're going to hang around and, uh, end up finishing the year as a pretty good team. And I agree with you. Uh, this is weird because I'm not usually like a 3-2 guy. I don't usually pick a lot of 3-2s. But I actually, I feel like Florida is like the team that just always is going to force a game five because they'll just find a way to randomly run at enough cuts to win a hard point uh, and then find a way to win either like the control or the Matt four hard point or something. So I do think this is going to go to a Matt five, actually. Uh, and I kind of along with my guy Aches, don't really have that much faith in LAG to close out a series, but I, I am going to go with them 3-2 in this one. Uh, it's so weird, though, because like Florida, when we thought they couldn't beat anybody, they like 3 0 Seattle when we still had faith in Seattle. Uh, so they're a very weird team, but I have said all along that I have the faith in LAG, so I got to stick with that and pick them 3-2. Uh, next match, the first match on Saturday is uh, another LAG match, right? LAG yeah. versus Paris. Uh where what do you think on this one? I'm assuming you're keeping your faith with LAG. I I guess so. Um, it's just you know if, if they come out of this weekend, uh, you know, I I think it would be a a shock for them, like internally to not come out of this week two and zero, just based on who they're playing. Um, oh, absolutely. They need to come out of this week two and zero if they want to be an elite I, team. I could definitely see them like still kind of like blundering a blundering a match away. So it's hard to pick them two in a row, but I'm gonna you know, go for it anyway. Um, yeah. I'm going to give Paris uh, two maps, though. So I'm going to have a LAG 3-2 here. I mean, I 100%, like, LAG, if they want to be an elite team, they have to come out of this week 2-0, and all, right? Like, if you want to be an elite team, you have to take out Florida and Paris. Like, those are two teams that, you know, I do think they're two teams that can beat anybody on the on the right day. Like, there are two teams that are competitive. Like, they can beat people, but, like, if you're LAG, those are two teams that are definitely in that eight to twelve range. Like you have to beat those two teams if if your goal is to end up being a top six team. Uh, but they're going to shock the world. I'm basically baited into doing this, but Paris is going to have that honeymoon phase. Jimbo's in the roster; they're winning three two. Donnie Temp, just like Nero, I picked in that Boston series. Donnie Temp's dropping nine to ten kills in the map five. Uh, Paris is taking out LAG three two. Dang! After I just said I had faith in. Uh, LAG, I got to make up some points on you. And I, I do think Paris is going to win a match in the qualifying somewhere here. Uh, they do play Minnesota also this weekend. I don't know what their schedule looks like for the rest. I don't know if they have any easy matches coming up. Uh, 
maybe like against an NYSL uh, or like if they get a rematch for Seattle. But I do have faith in LAG, but at the same time, I also think Paris might go through a honeymoon, like I said, and do think they're going to win a match at some point. And I got to make up some points on you. So I'm going bold and picking Paris 3-2 over LAG. Why not? Fair. I feel like it's not uh, outrageous. I mean, anytime you pick Paris, it's kind of outrageous, but I do feel like LAG is that team that could bottom out randomly. We've seen it. Yeah, yeah. They're they're bound to throw a couple got, up there. They've got a lot of peaks and valleys uh, yeah, in, their, and, in their chemistry here. And I mean, I could very also uh, very easily also see them three zero in Paris right off the map because they're motivated. But I feel like I've got to make up some points somewhere, and I don't think this is. I think this is a decent upset potential. Some teams that are not supposed to win are bound to win this coming weekend. Uh, we can move on to that next match on Saturday, though. Ravens versus Thieves, good matchup here. Uh, like we said a little bit when we were talking about the Gizmo and Paul X switch. I think maybe you would have been favoring London slightly with Gizmo because they uh, technically were the higher finishing team at the major. You know, they've looked very good, especially online. They looked extremely good. Uh, now, maybe you're leaning a little bit more towards Thieves as the favorite because of Gizmo being out. I am leaning that way, and I'm leaning Thieves in a 3-1. I know London have been my guys. It's kind of weird for me to pick against them because I've been picking for them all year. Uh, so all the EU listeners, all the UK listeners, I'm sorry I'm picking against London, but I'm going 3-1 Thieves. I think they're going to take both hard points. Uh, I think London will either take the search or the control. Yeah, it's hard for me to vary too much from that. Um, I wanted to say uh, Thieves sweep, but uh, I think London are still just too good to go down in three straight maps. Um, but then again, I, I think if, if Thieves go up like 2-0, if they win the hard point and then they they take the search, uh, which has you know been their weaker game mode. Then I, I think it would probably be a three zero, but I'm gonna still err on the side of caution and say three one. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel like it's it's hard to pick London just because we don't know how they're gonna look with Paul, and it's it's also you don't want to downplay how important Gizmo was. I mean, Gizmo in the qualifying matches had like a one point two. Uh, he's the second KD in the league behind Selim, and he was frying. Like he is crucial to this team, so it's hard. Uh, to pick London when they're playing such a good team like LA Thieves. I think that's kind of where we're both coming from. Uh, but once again, I wouldn't be shocked if London's able to pull this out because like Paul X is not like he's some slouch player. Right. Uh, as long as as long as he gets in there and uh, chemistry is on point. Like he did play with Afro last year, so I expect there to be at least a little bit of chemistry. Like I wouldn't be absolutely shocked. I do think this still has potential to be like a five game series, a really good series. Uh, Respawn still have potential to be a banger. I mean, these are two of the best hardpoint teams in the game. So hopefully it's a good series still. Hopefully London is uh, able to make it a close one, maybe pull it out. Uh, going to our other EU team, though, Toronto versus Minnesota, the Battle of the North, the, the rivalry that started out as manufactured but actually kind of turned cool once we saw that ultimate reverse sweep at the Major. Yeah. Um, you know, this really comes... I mean, like we were just kind of saying, it's like the battle of the two, you know, struggling hardpoint teams as well. Um, you know, I, I just think this has a game five written all over it. Uh for me personally. Uh so I'm gonna I gotta stick with my boys in Minnesota. I think that the roll swap honeymoonish period might work for them. Uh mm -hmm. so I'll go ahead and give them a three two win over Toronto Ultra here. Okay. You give Minnesota the win? Hmm. Man, this is another really tough one. I was leaning Minnesota, and I honestly thought you were going to pick Toronto. Uh, Toronto's in a weird spot right now, huh? Like, yeah, they just they, they they don't look like they're too sharp yet. But then again, <sighs> like they just have so much. Uh, to me, they have so much credence and like, uh, like they have so much like, good faith built up based on how good they've been. Uh, yeah, and like, would team. you be shocked if this week they showed up and they look like a top three team again? Like, I wouldn't. No, no, I, I would so be weird. like, oh, ultra are back, you know, like they're, you know, I, I think we're kind of, I think everybody's kind of just like holding a top four power rank spot for ultra too. Like they're kind of like, oh yeah, ultra will be back. So we're just going to reserve this spot for them. And it's because they do so much of what they do through perfect fundamentals and teamwork. And oh like, yeah, it's not so much like, hey, like if the ultra are off on a day and not shooting their gun straight, they can still beat a lot of top teams because they're so good fundamentally uh, and teamwork wise, communication wise, so good yeah. in search and destroy. Like normally a team that was coming off an O and eight hard point map count in the major, we'd be like, yeah, that team sucks. Or like, we need to pump the brakes on them. But Toronto, we're just like, yeah, well, I mean, once they figure out that hard point, they're going to be dominant. Yeah. Uh, 
And I don't one know. thing that one thing that Ultra do so well is like with the teamwork is they they rotate so well, and we've seen that this yep. this this game is like as much as the squad spawns and stuff you know throw a, a, a wrench into your plans and stuff. It is still rotation based. A lot of the hills are well. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it it wouldn't surprise me if Ultra came out and like you know hundred point clubbed rocker or something like. I'd be like, oh man, you know, Ultra really like they found their groove, but it, it wouldn't surprise me. Well, yeah, and the thing about Ultra too is like on the reverse sweep, Aix was really mentioning this, and Enable was really hammering it home too. Like a lot of these top teams, like what separates the top teams from the teams that end up slotting into like the five and six spot is like they have very, very good elite teamwork, but at the same time, they have those random players that can drop you a 2.0 in a map or a 1.5 in a map or a 1.5 in a series, and that's what Toronto has perfect teamwork. But Cami or Kleenex will drop a 1.5 on you randomly on a hard point. Even Insight might. Like, they have those players that can pop off. I think they're going to get back to that this week. I was I was going to go Minnesota, but I want to differ from you again a little bit. I think I'm going to go Toronto. Ice is up. Uh, mm, I'm, I'm between a 3-1 and a 3-2. Uh, I don't know. These teams always seem to go the distance. They play each other tight. I'll go 3-2, but I'll go to the side of Toronto. Make it a little okay. different. Uh, to me, this is a very toss-up series, though. They're, they're in the same boat. Great at search. Uh, you know, control is kind of whatever, and they both have sucked at hard point. So, uh, this series really, I think everybody would probably agree, comes down to the hard points. I feel like the team that wins that map one probably wins the series, in my opinion. Somebody's got to break that streak. I agree. All right. Uh, now we get to a match that would have looked a lot more juicy a couple weeks ago, huh? Atlanta versus Seattle. I mean, Atlanta's I- only match of the week, correct? Yeah, and Seattle's second match. Uh, going to be pretty hard for me to pick Seattle here. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to I'm going Atlanta 3-0. Yeah, I'm going to agree too. I think Atlanta come come out uh they're Boring. <laughs> they're going to be mad. Uh you know, they definitely are going to like I I think Phase are the team to kind of like embrace the adversity and kind of put their head down. Um you know, we saw them get a little bit cocky obviously on the main stage like a BZ with like the I can't hear you gesture. Yeah. Uh- um they 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 were kind. Of, I think they got a little bit out over their skis as being like the villain. You know, obviously at Optics Home Major as well. So mm-hmm. I think they really tried to flex, and you know, obviously it backfired on them. And um, so I wouldn't be shocked if like even on the main stage and stuff, if we don't get any more like reaction emotion out of Phase anymore, <laughs> like until they win series, like, until they clutch it, like close it out. Yeah, but I mean, even like. When they won champs and stuff, I, I felt like it was such a muted affair. Like it's not like they were like jumping up and down and stuff. It was just like, um, I don't know. Uh, that's you know, kind of. I mean, I know I'm going way off topic here, but like back to when we were saying like, what players do we want to uh, to have more exposures? Like I was like, I, I want the phase guys to have more exposures because I don't I don't know who they are. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know. Um, anyway. Uh, Atlanta three zero. Jeez, I that was a rant and a half, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I I'm in full agreement. Atlanta come out and they just like they they mop the floor with yeah. Surge I, here. I fully agree. Atlanta three zero. Kind of to go off your tangent, you said you went on. Uh, there's another thing that I heard Ake's talking about. He was like, I think they thought they wanted the the villain role, but then once they got in front of a crowd and were getting screamed overrated at and booed all the time and. They like got too angry at that crowd and too cocky and were like showing them up and they lost and they were like, oh no, maybe maybe this isn't for us. Like maybe it was too in their head uh, and they were so focused on trying to like prove the crowd wrong and like shove it in their face that uh, they kind of got like you said a little over their skis, a little bit uh, overzealous and kind of maybe screwed with them a little bit and maybe they actually really didn't want that villain role and they're kind of realizing that now. Uh, so I, I kind of agree. They maybe just they maybe were a little bit in over their head with what the villain role was, uh, and maybe and you know that's why Land's awesome. Maybe maybe saw a crowd play a factor uh, for the first time with Atlanta. Maybe not being able to handle that pressure and actually handle the villain role they thought they wanted. Uh, but I'm going Atlanta three zero here as well. I feel like they are going to come out angry uh, with something to prove. I wouldn't be shocked if they end up going five and zero in qualifiers again although i know they have optic later in the week so that'll be another banger but uh atlanta 3-0 it's just so hard to have any faith in seattle right now uh against the top dogs and we've seen them struggle so so badly uh moving on though uh minnesota paris am i gonna pick paris to go 2-0 and on the week uh minnesota paris what are you thinking i'm assuming assuming you're gonna rock with your boys minnesota yeah i'm gonna give paris one map here 
Um, I'm agreeing with you on this one. So, I don't know. I, mean, I could see this going game five as well, but I feel like we've picked a lot of game fives and like we never get the payout of that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to still ride with Minnesota here. I'm going to give them three one over Paris. Um, okay. I don't really I'm, think I'm in agreement. Yeah, I don't think it really requires too much like dissection of no. why. Uh, I don't know. Um, but obviously that would require Minnesota winning two hard points. So we'll see about that. Yeah, that would. Yeah, two hard points or maybe a hard point and control and search. I guess they could just win uh, either the map one or four. They could just go one. But yeah, I, I agree. I think Paris is going to I think Paris will maybe take the control, uh, take the control, and lose three one. I'll go Minnesota here, though. It's I mean, I'm going bold by picking Paris once this week. I can't pick them twice, uh, but I agree. I, I don't think they're a team that is going to get three oh too often because I feel like they are going to be very scrappy. Uh, but I feel like a three one's justified for Minnesota. Next match, Subliners Florida, our second to last match of the weekend, uh, and the last one's a banger. So, Subliners Florida, our Subliners gonna get their first win of the stage, maybe win their first hard point if they don't against London earlier in the week. Oh, this is so hard. hard to play bow cage map one. It this is so weird to see, like New York going this far without a single series win. Well, well, they have a or, series I, win. No, no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I mean, um, yeah. Hard apologies, point. apologies on that. Apologies. <laughs> on that. Um, but yeah, uh, Actually, maybe get uh, them on track for hard point uh, or not for hard point. Excuse me. Jeez. Uh, for teamwork. And if there's one thing that can beat Florida, it's good teamwork because they uh, are extremely poor pacing in teamwork. Oh, once again, like these are two teams that could shock us and could have been silently scrimming with a different player and could uh, pull off a roster change before the match because uh, they're definitely two candidates for roster change. But I want to go bold and pick subline this year. I think they're going to ice up. Uh, I'm not, uh, screw it. No, they're not going to ice up in a game five. They're going to win 3-1. I'll pick subliners. I'll go the opposite of you, but subliners. Uh, I don't know. I feel like at some point they have to start winning matches. Paco is going to have... Uh, he can only have a 1.7 and a 1.5 in so many series in a row before he eventually gets a win uh, and doesn't get 3 Uh It's definitely a bold pick to pick subliners. They're definitely the underdog in this one, but I, I feel like there's a chance that they're able to pull off a match, and I guess like Florida is one of the, the more likely teams. I, I definitely don't think they're going to pull it out against London because London's a pretty elite team, but I'll pick them 3-1 against Florida just to be a little different and go a little bold. Uh, and, and, you know, it is crim and clay. I wouldn't be shocked at some point if they just randomly figure it out this week and become a halfway decent team. What do you think about that? Am I crazy for yeah, New York? <laughs> no, no. I mean, I was definitely... Uh, I was toying around with New York here. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I just need... I'm going to need to see more than Paco dropping a 1.5. Yeah, that, that's fair. <laughs> Um, and it still leaves the question like they very realistically could come out tomorrow morning or afternoon with like, hey, we dropped royalty and yeah, hey, here's, our, back. here's our new here's <laughs> our new sub or here's Neptune back or something like you said. So who knows? Um, I, I, I definitely like the New York pick for hedging your bet on them doing something uh, because you could, you know, you could make up some ground here with the with, with the correct map map count and everything so i don't know that, that that's my thoughts there it's definitely one of the most likely times to be able to pick new york it's one of the more likely matches they have a chance to win that's for sure uh compared to some of the other opponents they could face uh like london this week who they face in the first match of the weekend uh but our last match for the week um 
Thieves versus Optic. That's a very good match. Uh, that is maybe possibly you could argue the two best hardpoint teams in the game. You know, London's up there, obviously FaZe is up there, but potentially the two best hardpoint teams in the game. Uh, Optic has looked very strong in Search. Thieves have looked very weak in Search. Uh, Control-wise, they both look pretty strong overall. They both look good on uh, Gavutu. So that would maybe be an interesting uh, map for them to play. Uh, I would assume they're probably going to play that unless Optic want to veto it because Optic do seem to be favored on Tuscan Control, I would say, if that's the map we play because uh, they are the the probably the more sub-dominant team. I feel like you favor Optic on sub-maps over Thieves. But hmm, I don't know where I'm thinking on this one. I believe the Tick update should be in the game for these matches. Like when I've been playing yeah. rank play, it isn't in yet. It's still been kills. Like I played rank play oh. yesterday and it was still kills. So I don't know if that's actually going to be in. Uh, could change things, but this will be an interesting series. Uh, the hard points should be absolutely awesome. Uh, I feel like you maybe lean thieves a little bit in the hard points. Definitely lean optic in the searches and the controls kind of a toss up. Control might be the decider in this series. Yeah, it could. Uh, I don't know. Do do you think optic are kind of like proverbially or literally still hung over? Uh, uh, I hope they're not literally still hung over by next weekend, but I don't know. Some of Scum's tweets, he was like he he was like he was back in the day when he used to win every event in the jetpacks, and you could just tell it got to a certain point uh, where it was like, oh yeah, Scum's hammered on the night, celebrating, and his tweets would get funnier. Uh, <laughs> like I don't know what he tweeted this weekend. It was like somebody posted something, and he posted like the Spider Man gif, and every comment on it was just like, yeah, he's gone, he is gone. <laughs> like have a shot on me, <laughs> Scum, and like everybody, it was it was hilarious. Uh, like he tweeted that picture with. This was before you were in the scene, uh, really, really into the competitive scene. I don't know if you remember back in the day, Scump, uh, BO4. I guess no, it was when you were in the scene. It was Modern Warfare, but Scump obviously teamed with TJ. Uh, obviously, like between him, TJ, uh, Dashy, those guys, like they had a very good vibe because uh, yeah. TJ and Dashy are pretty funny guys. Scump obviously likes to troll. They had a good vibe, and TJ, like when he left, he or he was still on Optic. Obviously, Scump split up Huntsman. Uh, and every time TJ would post something or Scump would post something, TJ would like bait comment on it, and Scump would be like, "Say it, say it," because he wanted TJ to say that he missed him. Uh, like every time TJ would post something, he would be like, "Say it," and TJ like just like troll him and refuse to say it. Uh, and when he posted a picture with TJ and Methods, I was waiting for him to do the classic "Say it, TJ, say you miss me." Because uh, that used to be the f- I, I don't know why I used to get a kick out of that because he posted <laughs> that picture with TJ and Methods after they won, and he has this weird smirk on his face. He looks like he's hammered, and he says, "My sons, TJ and Methods." Uh, <laughs> and then, yeah, he posted a. This is what it was. He posted a picture with like a multicolored like rainbow beads bracelet and then he has one like homemade this is optic texas and he says trust in yours and he tagged the whole team in it and everybody's like yeah he's gone he is gone oh that's what it was then illy commented and said straight unit and he posted the spider-man looking at each other gift and then the entire comment section is just uh well somebody posted the meme of in her uh outer block one shot with uh the girl from monsters ain't crying on the headset <laughs> uh, and then everybody's like oh he's definitely lit right now uh He's definitely on cloud 9, 10, 11, and 12 combined. Take another shot. Uh, people were trying to bait him to answer weird questions, but it was hilarious. Uh, so mm-hmm. maybe they are still hung over for how hammered he might have been. Yeah, so I don't know. Uh, <laughs> a long diatribe there about you know <laughs> their their mental state going in. I mean, obviously the vibes will be high. Um, but yeah. Be honest, uh, if I had a lock of the week, I'm locking in on this match on Optic. I'm going to be honest with you. You're locking in Optic winning? I'm locking them in for a 3-1 win. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll go different just to uh, maybe hedge my bet and get <laughs> uh, get a get some you know breathing room on you. Um, but it's so like you said, it's so hard to pick against Optic right now. Um, it's kind of like the phase spot for me. In my opinion, Optic are the unquestioned best team in the game right now. So uh, yeah. until I see them lose, I'm gonna keep picking with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, no, you, you see, you just talked me back into Optic now. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go Optic. I'm going to give Optic a 3-0 sweep. Wow, that's bold. Uh, I don't I don't hate it, though. Like, I, I honestly could see either team in this series 3 0 because they're both so talented, like, on the right day. Uh, so you're, but you're going 3-1. I'm going 3-1. Okay. All right, yeah, yeah I'm gonna, I'm, I'll give Optic. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I guess I'll talk myself into optic coming out with like the, like <laughs> like I said last pod with the uh, with the BDE you know mm-hmm. um, I I really uh, feel pretty strongly that I want to pick with optic until I see them lose because that's kind of how I was with phase uh, 
I basically pick them until I see them lose. Yeah. And I think Optic plays phase in their final match of the yep, yep. qualifiers. Uh, of the entire qualifier. It's like it's and the second to last match of the entire who qualifiers. Who do they I don't I don't have a list up of who they play the entire uh qualifiers, but I believe it was like Thieves and Phase bookend their stage two yeah, qualifiers. I think, they, and I, I think they play Florida somewhere. Yeah, like I thought it was well. three games that they definitely should win in the middle. Yeah. And then like they bookend with Thieves and Phase, which are obviously very tough series. But yeah. I feel like I don't know from I don't remember exactly what their schedule is. I don't have it up here, but I feel like from what I remember seeing, I think Optic could be four and zero going into that final match against Phase, and then it'll be a matter of uh I think there's a potential that both Phase and Optic are four and zero going into that final match and then they play for one seed. Uh Dang. At major two is kind of what I think could be a really exciting game, but I'm, I'm going to go optic here. I'm going to roll with them to potentially start four and zero. I'm going to be honest. I'm kind of hoping for them to start four and zero and hoping for phase to start four and zero because that'd be kind of a banger. Uh, about as banger as a qualifying match could get. Optic phase playing for the yeah. one seed. Yeah, but, yeah. So, so just a little preview that they they play after this. They play surge, okay. Florida, and gorillas. So three matches I would expect them to win. Yeah, and and then they yeah you said yeah you got it right. They bookend with phase on the last sunday so yeah so yeah, yeah I, I i really hope that phase and optic are four and all going into the final matches so they play for one seed uh because i would still say they're probably the one and two teams in the league right now uh the two favorites to go to major two and win unless we see a crazy development from some team but i'd love to see them both four and zero uh going into that match i'm gonna pick optic three one uh, I think it also create kind of cool storylines for how much of a rivalry it's turning into this year with how the major went. That'd be cool if they were playing for the one seed because uh, it can make a difference. I mean, like the difference in uh, the one seed this weekend was you got to play uh, Boston as the one seed and then the two seed was Thieves or London. Had to be Thieves because they're on the other bottom part of the bracket. So mm-hmm. the difference between one and two was the one seed got to play Boston and the two seed had to play Ultra. Uh, pretty major difference. Yeah, so, yeah. We'll we'll see if that becomes the case. There's a long way to go. These could easily take out optic, and this could all be a a null conversation. But both picking optic, we went pretty similar. A couple different predictions this week. Yeah, um, I don't know. Not as many three O's as maybe we would have expected or thought. Um, there's got to be at least one more sprinkled in there. Um, oh, for sure. But yeah, I mean, I I really like the beginning matches too. It's a lot of like, uh. Aside from this, like Ravens, which we think will roll, um, this like you know the Seattle, Boston, Florida, LA. Yeah, it's a lot of like question mark Paris, things. LAG stuff. It's a lot of like oh, like a lot of intrigue there to see if these bottom teams can, or you know, bottom ish teams can put up a fight against you know themselves really with with Seattle and stuff falling hard and um and then you know some actual like you know, tests for teams that are like middle of the pack or that we think should be looking to improve and stuff, you know, if they can come out of this week, you know, with a win and stuff, I I think that'll serve as a big boost to people's confidence and stuff. So yeah, no good series of matches this weekend. I'm excited. I'm super excited too because, like, like you said, the beginning kind of starts out with a lot of question mark teams that we want to see who they are, and they're all playing each other, so it's more fun than like, hey, you know what, Seattle's kind of a question mark. Let's throw them against Phase, which uh, they obviously do later in the week, but we get to at least first see them against another middle team in Boston. You know, Florida and LAG, like, we're kind of questioning who they both are. They play each other. Paris and LAG, same thing. They play each other. Uh, New York gets a test against a London team with a new player in the roster. Uh, even like Ravens Thieves interesting matchup minnesota toronto we're kind of questioning where they're at uh because toronto has struggled so much and minnesota's making a role change like a lot of the beginning matches are kind of middle middle of the road to bottom teams who are trying to figure themselves out and they get to play each other instead of playing such a dominant team so i feel like uh we are in for an interesting week of matches and we'll maybe get a little bit more clarity on uh where to sort out teams like six through twelve uh, you agree with that yeah i like yeah like you said there's a lot of you know testy matches like uh I, I would say, you know, the the public opinion on a lot of teams could improve or it could go down a lot uh, based on even mm-hmm. just this one week of matches or, you know, the, the overall prospectus on how we're, how we're thinking about these teams going forward. Um, I'll be honest. My big storyline for the week is if LAG doesn't go 2-0, and we might be looking at roster changes because at some point they're going to not accept losses. Like if they like go 1-1 one one or 0-2 oh this week against two games that they should win, uh... They might start to talk about what what can they do to move things around or get things moving because I'm sure they are paying a pretty penny for that team and they don't want right. to see another top 12 finish. 
Yeah, that's a that's a interesting look there. Uh, also, like you said, like uh, like we like we highlighted as well, uh, we could see some roster changes even now before these matches kick mm-hmm. off on Friday sure. afternoon. Um, people could be testing people, and we don't even know it. Yeah. So, um, but like we, I, I think we tried to highlight that in all of our predictions too. Like, yeah, would it really change my outlook if you know, unless like subliners bring in like I don't know. X player that's like a superstar sub to run along Hydra. Uh, do I really think that that's going to change this week's matches? Probably not. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I, I fully agree. Uh, I think we can wrap this one out and get out of here. Unless you want to do a little down bad for us over the week. I think everybody knows what mine would be. A interesting situation to happen with one of my teams uh, this week. All right, let's hear it. Uh, obviously. My my football team, the Colts, tr- just traded away. The day that we're recording this is actually the day the trade happened. Uh, I'll probably go up the next day uh, after the trade occurred. But Colts traded who we thought maybe was potential franchise quarterback. Uh, some wild stuff. Sounds like some COD roster news drama uh, with the stuff coming out of the locker room. They like basically were not sold on the guy. Uh, apparently, like a lot of people in the organization like lost faith in him during training camp. Uh, Apparently they said he's like a terrible leader. He doesn't like if somebody tries to coach him, he just thinks he's above coaching. Uh, and like nobody had faith in him because he just like wasn't willing to learn or change any of his ways. He basically was like, yeah, if you don't like the way I am, well, screw you. Uh, refused to take coaching. And apparently he tried to have a meeting with the Colts owner uh, after the season to like explain himself and like try to like plead his case. And the Colts owner said, yeah, I'm done with you and didn't take the meeting, refused to meet with him, which is kind of a boss move. Uh you're just done with a guy and you don't want him to like come begging back to you to explain that he'll change because you know he won't and you're just like yeah i'm done with you uh and apparently uh the the day before obviously in the trade uh they got if you didn't know they got uh third round pick this year from washington then they swapped second round pick so they moved up a bunch of spots on the second round because washington had a worse record this year uh and then they also got another third round pick next year that becomes a second round pick if uh well, uh, if Carson Wentz plays 70% of Washington snaps, which uh, obviously he's going to get a chance to be the starter all year. So uh, as long as he doesn't get injured, which he had a fully healthy year this year. So as long as he doesn't get injured, they'll get a second round pick. And also the uh, Washington now commanders are paying him his entire contract, uh, which is absolutely absurd because a lot of times in trades like this in the NFL, uh, the team that's trading away the player eats a lot of the contract. Uh, and apparently... Yesterday, uh, on Tuesday, the offer from Washington stood at a fourth and a sixth round pick. Uh, and then when Russ Wilson was traded, I don't know how the Colts got such a much better offer uh, and recouped a lot of value. They now stand as the team with the most cap space in the NFL by about $20 million, which is absurd in its own right. Uh, but I don't know. It's pretty pretty exciting, I guess. They get out from under a pretty terrible contract and a player that the whole organization, I guess, didn't want anymore. So kind of excited to see where it goes. Unfortunately, we didn't land Russell Wilson. Uh, didn't really have the draft capital to get him anyways. But I don't know. Excited to see where things go. Not really that down bad about it. More uh, interested to see what happens. You got anything this week? Uh, I'm still kind of... I don't know. Um, We got the baseball lockout still going on. Yeah. Um, I think I'll kind of harp on that for a second or two. Uh, So it's gotten to the point where they're already canceling regular season games now. Um, Mm Mm-hmm. Spring training has been essentially like nullified. Uh, so I, I think that there's still like obviously like workouts and stuff going on. Um, you be as, it'd be hard to kind of get into the season with like a totally cold team with like no live pitching experience or anything. Um, pitchers not having thrown or anything. So there's still some like workouts going on to my knowledge. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> To the point where your lockout is affecting the regular season. Obviously, baseball plays 162 games in a season, so uh, it's a long, you know, grueling season where you know you have games, you know, most days of the week uh, for your teams and stuff. So, you know, they're already canceling games. Uh, it looks really bad for your sport, which kind of has a, you know, depending on who you ask, it has a, a dying population with yeah. fandom. The games take like three plus hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's you know it's it's not as flashy and sexy as like football or basketball uh to kind of capture like the young people um so yeah i mean they're not doing themselves any favors uh 
kind of sucks for people like me who are, you know, big, you know, I play baseball, uh, you know, I play in like an adult league and stuff too. So it's, you know, I, I have a, you know, pretty strong, you know, personal connection to the sport and stuff. So it's uh, a little bit disappointing. Um, especially when you consider that it's a bunch of like millionaires and billionaires who can't agree to, uh, you know, concede a little bit more to uh, <laughs> their, their players, their employees really. Um, and yeah, it's easy to look at like the, the really rich players and stuff, but um, there's a stat out there. I'm not, I don't have it with me, but um, the majority of MLB players make like less than uh, six figures. Um or something like that. So it's not like these guys are really raking in, uh, you know, a, a boatload of money. Or it, I don't know if it's six figures or if they make less than a million or something. But regardless, it's still like for what professional athletes you would think make, uh, it's not a lot. And that's just one of the things that they're arguing about, like when they can become eligible for arbitration and stuff, which is like a contract negotiating thing. So. A lot of things that I'm not even really well read up on, but um, it just seems like these, you know, these greedy owners and stuff uh, just look for any excuse to <laughs> avoid having to spend any more of their own money. Like they have to get taxpayer funding to build their own stadiums and stuff. It's it's kind of disgusting. Look at like the global financial system, but I'm kind of getting off track. So uh, and we've kept people here long enough. So baseball lockout equals bad. Yeah, I mean, it, it sucks whenever, especially if you're a big fan of baseball and keeps getting pushed out and pushed out and pushed out and more games keep getting canceled. It sucks. Uh, obviously, that that's happened before with uh, both the NFL and NBA, which are two of uh, my two favorite sports. But yeah, it's, it's never a good thing, especially for fans of the sport like yourself who would maybe call it your favorite sport and you just keep seeing uh, games being canceled. So that definitely sucks. Uh, but like you said, we can wrap it up. Get on here. This was a slightly shorter episode, about an hour long. Uh, just had to do predictions because obviously we talked about the major. This is the reason we didn't want to uh, put it all into one episode because we didn't want to keep you here for four hours or something of your time because the major is a lot to unpack and the way they do the schedule is very odd uh, with the fact that we're done with the major and then we go straight into matches, but we have a week off uh, in between the qualifying matches and the major. Just kind of a weird way to do it, but uh, that's the way the CDL schedule that I'm surprised they didn't change it. Uh, when maybe they'll change it for major three when they realize how weird it is uh but that's gonna do it for this one if you guys watched on youtube we'd appreciate it if you dropped a uh, like on the video comment down below your thoughts on your predictions for the week anything bold are you gonna be bold like me and pick paris or are you gonna call me an idiot for doing it uh, uh and then also subscribe i think on that last video like 70 percent of the people that watched uh i believe were not subscribed so we'd appreciate it if you guys enjoyed if you drop a sub uh Sport's been crazy. I feel like I was just talking about the fact that we hit uh, 415 or 400 subs. Now we're like 415, 420. Uh, a lot of you guys are subscribing, so we really appreciate that. Uh, sport's been crazy. If you guys are on the audio platforms, drop a follow, leave a review on there. That would be awesome. Uh, and that's going to do it for this one. Predictions are in. We'll be back uh, early next week, probably Monday or Tuesday, with uh, our reactions to the matches and then more predictions for the ones coming up. I'm going to the event at the end of the month. I cannot wait. So, uh, fast forward to these matches so i can be there in person and uh, watch hopefully another historic major that's going to do it for this one and we will see you guys in the next one thanks for watching everyone